This is the JTV Caribbean News. I am Sean Rose. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS Assembly, held its first sitting on Tuesday, March 26, following the inauguration in August 2012. The OECS Assembly serves as a legislative filter for the OECS. The five main areas for which decisions taken are legally binding on member states are the common market aspects of the economic union, monetary policy, trade policy, maritime jurisdiction and maritime boundaries, and civil aviation. Among matters on the order paper was a motion to look at the challenges of free movement of people within the OECS Economic Union. Free movement began on August 1, 2011. The OECS member states are Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, all of which participate in the Economic Union. The non-member states are Anguilla and the British Virgin Islands. Antigua and Barbuda is the permanent seat of the Assembly. Construction on a pipeline that will bring natural gas from Trinidad and Tobago to islands of the Eastern Caribbean will begin next year, according to the Eastern Caribbean Gas Pipeline Company. The pipeline will begin at southwestern Tobago with the first phase of the $300 million project to end in Barbados. Gas will be pumped to Barbados in 2016. The 300-kilometer pipeline will also deliver natural gas to other Eastern Caribbean islands. According to Greg Rich, the CEO of Eastern Caribbean Gas Pipeline Company, the infrastructure experience and substantial financial resources of Beowulf and First Reserve Energy Infrastructure Fund will accelerate the implementation of this regionally important project. Beowulf Energy and First Reserve Energy Infrastructure Fund own a majority interest in Eastern Caribbean Gas Pipeline Company. Barbados Attorney General and Minister of Home Affairs Adriel Brathwaite will sign a Memorandum of Understanding with the Organization of American States to establish a drug treatment court in Barbados. It is anticipated that after the signing of the MOU, the OAS will begin to work with the government of Barbados to put the structures in place to establish the court. Last June, judges, magistrates, senior public servants, police officers and a wide range of stakeholders involved in drug treatment and rehabilitation attended a sensitization workshop organized by the OAS. The workshop, funded by Canada, explored the feasibility of introducing a drug treatment court model in Barbados. Drug treatment courts have proven to be effective in reducing crime, preventing relapse into drug use and stemming the alarming growth of prison populations. They have also proven to be a cost-effective alternative to incarceration. The Progressive National Party, the PNP, has won the by-election in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Amanda Misik won a by-election that could have changed the balance of power in the Turks and Caicos Islands House of Assembly. Misik received 455 votes to 385 votes tallied for Oral Isaac Selva of the People's Democratic Party, according to Supervisor of Elections Dudley Lewis. The win means the Progressive National Party retains its narrow 8-7 hold on the House of Assembly. A victory by Selva would have meant a majority for the PDP. The election was the result of a court ruling which invalidated Missick's win in the November 9 election for the Treshire Hill and Richmond Hill District. That ruling cited the fact that one candidate was not eligible for the House of Assembly due to his holding of a dual citizenship status. The government of Jamaica is in the process of rolling out an island-wide broadband network to provide universal access to digital technology for all Jamaicans. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller says this will be provided through the Universal Service Fund. Addressing the official opening of the Digicel Regional Headquarters in Kingston, Jamaica on March 19, Simpson-Miller pointed out that digital inclusion ensures that vulnerable groups in the society have access to and possess the necessary skills to use information and communication technologies. She said there is always the risk that carriers and service providers will favor geographical areas that are densely populated and where the cost of delivering service per customer is relatively low. In these situations, she said the government has to directly intervene to promote universal access. The Jamaican Prime Minister says service providers like Digicel are expected to respond positively and make the investment necessary to connect low-density communities so as to achieve full digital inclusion. 
The Prime Minister acknowledged that issues regarding child protection and cybersecurity are important considerations in creating an enabling environment facilitated by broadband and ICTs, but said government will not be daunted as it seeks to collaborate with all stakeholders, local, regional and international, to mitigate against these threats to development. For the JTV Caribbean News, I am Sean Rose. Coming up next on JTV News. The number of guaranteed passengers is a major reason for the selection of Tortola Pier Park for the Cruise Pier project. Students at St. George's Primary get ready for a National Science Fair. Silvana Charles, victorious among four Miss Virgin Gorda Easter Festival contestants. All right, ladies and gentlemen. 2013 Miss Virgin Gorda Easter Festival goes to Miss Sylvana Charles. 